Okay, let me give a little intro with what's happening. So, this is for an English project, and basically, what my topic is, my research topic is about, is physical attraction. And I decided to make a podcast about it, and we have both guy and girl perspectives on this. I feel like the guys are pretty diverse, so they can bring in their own opinion. But yeah, let's get started. So, first things first,、um, we'll start with、um, okay, we'll start with the easy one. So, I did a research topic. Do you want to talk about your, your baby? Oh, yeah, so we got, we got baby one. The other babies are not you, but just kidding. We got baby big butt missing. Eddie, does it have wings? It does have wings. All the babies have wings. Oh, they do?、Mm-hmm. Yeah, they all have wings. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're a sister. Two babies in real life. I'll do eight. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. I'll start with the first question, okay?、Mm-hmm. So, context、um, men, this is like the, the title.、Okay. Men dissociate sexual attraction from moral judgment more than women. So, basically, this article. Did a study on、um, bringing in like the opposite, like both genders, and showing them photos, and they were proceeded to like be told about specific things about these people to see if like men dissociate physical attraction with like moral judgment. What does that mean? So, like, whether guys、yeah. like care morally about the opinions they have on women? No, guys. Yeah. Okay, so men. Elaborate that one. Just make it simple. Or like do moral decisions based off attraction. Um, Let me just read off what I put down. It said men compared with women possess a greater desire for a variety of sexual partners, require less time before consenting into sexual intercourse, and tend to more actively seek short term relations, like mateships. Do you guys think that's true? That guys, that guys, like, guys that hook up with girls easily? Yeah. They don't feel like attached? Yeah. Like, they just kind of require less time to actually starting sexual intercourse. This is more of a question for the guys. Okay. Go ahead, Nick. All right. I concur with the statement. I believe that as guys, we tend to. Prefer short term relationships with girls who we're not necessarily attracted to personality wise. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> He、um, likes this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> also, um, guys tend to go for more attractive, like just more based off looks. My bad. No, you can see how loud it is. Alright.、Um, this is like, the question was like based off like morality? Um, I guess you could say that. It's just like guys just. Basically, to sum up this like, quote, like, quote I basically took from the article, is basically saying like, men like, don't require that much time before they have sexual intercourse with a woman. Can we talk about this without seeing like a pick me guy?、Um, yes, I, I, I concur with the statement. Yes, I agree. Because <laughs> like, I feel like guys, when they see a girl that they like, Like, it t- only takes like maybe a few seconds to a couple minutes to decide whether they want to have sex with them or not. Not even a couple minutes, just like three、so、looks. But that's like, the, <laughs> that's just you guys though. Like, oh, you want to be、I、so、can. different. You that's the thing. Like, I don't know how to talk about someone who's like a pick me guy, because, like, I me mean, genuinely. No, just be no, honest. Yeah, just be honest. Be honest. Be honest. Be honest. No, like, dead ass. No, like, yeah. Yeah, well, well, I mean, it is your. Dude, your if、team. you want me to put this in a really vulgar way, my pee pee will make it hard for you. I can tell. I know. No, but like, like, I don't know. I just don't feel good. 
I feel like on the general side, it takes guys less time, and they can like. Right, on the general side, I think so. Yeah. It just like takes less time if you're just taking yeah. like an average, like sample. On average, yeah, yeah. guys. Yeah, take on less average, time. yeah, I think. And women. I mean, I yeah, less. I feel like it's like that because guys tend to look at like looks yeah, more yeah. than like personality. Girls tend to look at personality and more like other characteristics just besides looks. Mm-hmm. So it takes long longer to understand and discover those things for in just in general. So it would take longer for a girl. See, but at the same time, you have to think about like the social stakes in it from like guys compared to girls. With guys, you know, they can have sex with pretty much anyone, and most of the society will like praise them for it, like you're that guy. But with girls, you know, anyone, there's always anything. the like social risk that if you sleep with too many guys, chances are that any other guy is gonna look at you and call you like a slut. You know. That's true. But if he was a real man. They don't care. True, it's true. That's the thing because they don't. Sluts are people they don't too. Have a to care. Sluts are people too. They don't like. They don't have a reason to care. You know. Sluts are people. You're too. not gonna lose anything. Trademark that. No, Kelly. Did you wanna add anything? Um, I feel like that was like a general question. If the guys, mm-hmm. the person, I don't know. I feel like, like, do I think that? Do I think that guys, like, make it easier? Me personally, yeah. I do think that like guys do have it easier when it comes to like like wanting to smash girls and whatnot because like i don't know like girls are pretty mean period i'm not gonna lie and like like then again like and but like i only know this from experience but then like what based off of like what like my boyfriend said you know like if a guy is down or if the girl's down then the guy's down right you know and like yeah and like i never really thought about it like that but then like like i guess like you kind of hear it from like your significant other, you're kind of like, damn, I was one of that, but, you know, so, yeah, so I do think that, like, yeah, guys do have it easier when it comes to, like, like, banging chicks. I think a lot, okay, so I saw this, I saw this TikTok, this very, this really, I saw this. Reference. This, this is a great <laughs> reference source. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I saw this TikTok of a guy speaking, and he basically... <laughs> He basically said that like the men have never really received that much affection growing up so the only way they can really express it is through sexual intercourse do you think that is true i feel like that's a little true because as guys growing up we don't receive that much like physical like love from our parents it's more of just like saying words maybe depending on how you grow up so like most a lot of guys have like like the love language of like physical touch, which means like they lack that as child growing up. So like, I would say personally, most guys do lack a lot of physical touch growing up. So the best way, th- and it's also hard to show your emotions through words. Oh wait, shit. Um, be- <laughs> because because uh, because speaking about your feelings is also another thing guys don't do well on because we're not allowed to show that much feelings. Because most guys in friendships, they'll get ridiculed and like just like make fun of for showing for, like emotion, depending on the friends, depending on the friends and people. That like if you show some emotion, they'll you'll get like called like a bitch or a pussy, or, like some yeah. shit like that. Yeah, you bitch. <laughs> <laughs> that like it's kind of hard to like express emotional like feelings when you haven't done it so much. Yeah, I agree with that. It just I feel like guys. One, um, one along with what Zach was saying, guys growing up don't get to be vulnerable or aren't portrayed as vulnerable. So when it comes to like making love or being intimate, that's a key time where they can be vulnerable. Because obviously like, it takes two to tango and most likely the girls on the guys are down. You know, here's the thing though, like I'm not gonna lie, my parents, like even if like they're Hispanic and like you could think of them as like the traditional Hispanic parents, they were like low key hippie as fuck and like woke as fuck to the point where like they they did always like teach me how to like express my emotions and shit like that. Um, at least like so I mean like I didn't have the same experiences like like these two guys did I guess where they just like didn't get like emotional or physical help with from their parents. It's like, it wasn't just like one and not the other one. Like both of them, like I still have a good relationship with them today. Um, and like yeah, I will say like sometimes I do struggle to like display emotion because yeah I'm scared of being called a pussy at times, but like at the same time I'm a pretty stubborn guy So the second someone to like show and use me any opposition to like 
displaying my emotions, it makes me just want to want like display them even more. You know, like prove them wrong. Um, but that's that's just me. So. It shouldn't matter whether but. you display your emotions or not. You should be able to if you want to. You shouldn't care about other people's judgment. Like the new generation, a lot of people have been open to like guys being more vulnerable. But like obviously, some of the girls definitely still have like a very traditional mindset and I hate it when a guy like remotely shows his feelings whatsoever but you know that tiktok really made me think like damn tiktok or tiktok tiktok did i say tiktok you said tiktok yeah i'm talking about tiktok 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 you should have just lied and said tiktok honestly could have been yeah citation um citation ted talk no tiktok but yeah no that tiktok really made me think because honestly it's it's really true um that's not an excuse though so so okay Okay. next question um (laughs) yeah yeah no that's a good start that's a good start um so from this next from this next article, um, it is called Do Men Help Only Beautiful Women in Social Networks? So basically what they did was um, they had three groups of women, all right? So the first group was like physical attraction wise, it was below average, second was above average. And where'd you get these statistics? Yeah, um, set your sources. Come this on. This is oh. this is from EBSCO host. <laughs> Not TikTok. No, unfortunately. So um, yeah, and then the third group was unknown physical attractiveness. So they found that the men were more detailed and more helpful and friendlier to those who were above average, and then. Um, they were friendlier to those who were had an unknown physical attractiveness. Um, and they had come to the conclusion that this could also be due to the ma- like help the male's mating strategy. So um, mating strategy is no. crazy. <laughs> it, when you really think about it, it is kinda true because with like women at least when a woman is attracted to a guy i don't know if you guys know this yet but she will often (laughs) she will often start talking in a very baby voice she'll start to like act more helpless that's so crazy um it's it's just a thing and like i think it's true um and in return the guys will like Kinda the, like filling the gap. Yeah, you know, like the, the guys girls will be come like in baby and, to like for the guy to fill in the gap. I mean, okay. Loki, that sounds like the girls have daddy issues. Zach! <laughs> <laughs> bro, this is getting submitted, bro. <laughs> this is going in a D2L Dropbox. <laughs> we said worse things. We said worse things. What do you have? What do you Um. Yeah, no, I think it's true. Um. So, my question is. Like, okay, so this is for question for guys. Do you find yourself doing that more for a woman when you're attracted to her? What? Like helping them out? <laughs> like helping them out? <laughs> or like... Yeah, them? like, do you find yourself, like, acting like, um, pretty, like, knight in shining armor whenever you like a girl? <laughs> Zach, can you go first? No, you guys can go first. I'm just holding. All right. No, I think uh, at least for me, there's definitely an appeal to being like, I guess yeah, that like the knight in shining armor, being the person that your girl relies on. You know, um, I don't know if I would, like how I would like the idea of the girl to like, not like purposefully, but to like subconsciously like act like a little bit more helpless just so that I help them. Like that's kind of a that nah for me. But like at the same time, I, I do like the idea of being an anchor to her, you know? So like, I guess I would catch myself offering to do more things for her, I guess offer to be there more for her than like the average person, you know? But 
I guess that just comes from me wanting to like have a bigger role in her life, be you know reliable. Isn't this your your assignment? This is your assignment. You're not even paying attention. I'm That's sorry. crazy. I'm sorry. That's crazy. Cut. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, cut. Repeat that. No, I heard what you said. I heard what you said. Did you though? Yeah. Did you? Did you? Yeah. Okay. No, what because what you what you said is valid. Like mm -hmm. I understand. You can be iterating. I understand that like, because they're talking to a lot of more of my guy friends. I've been hearing a lot of them saying like. Oh, baby voice is like a turn off. Like they don't like that stuff and everything like that. But there are moments where a guy loves it. Like well, of course, like in the right context, right. you know. But, I like, gotta... but like, <laughs> I'm sorry, but like I think back to like high school. There was this one girl that I sat next to who kind of like had a thing for me, and like anything that we would do, like a like a chemistry worksheet, she would just go, "I don't know how to do it." I'm sorry, but like, <laughs> bro, like it's like bad, you know. But I guess like in the right context, like. If you're being like playful and everything, I guess so. Hey, give us an example, like from all of you guys. Give us an example of a girl doing that. I already put my two cents in. Yeah. All right. So personally, when a girl does that, I don't really find that attractive. Like what what Nico said. Personally, I like to be. Tr I like to do the opposite. I want to be treated right, like the way I deserve to be treated. So a girl should be treating me and being like. When I'm helpless, they should they should be like that. Like, I don't know how to put that into words, but like like a fifty fifty. Yes, fifty fifty. Yeah. It should be fifty fifty. If it's a little more, a little less to the other side, that's okay. As long as like, in the end, like, as long as as much as I'm contributing, she's contributing. So like, say like um, uh, like I help her out with an assignment, she'll help me out with mine. So like a thing me and my ex girlfriend would do would was be like she would work she would pre she would proofread all my essays in high school. Okay. It, she would proofread all of my essays because I was really bad at English, and I would help her with math homework. And it wasn't because I'm Asian and I'm good at math. It was because I was actually good at math and she was good at English. So like it was kind of fifty fifty when it came to like stuff like that. So that's how I would personally <laughs> like it. Personally? Yeah, sounds about right. Adrian, would you like to help? How can you? Can you Um, do you find yourself trying to act more of like a knight in shining armor to a woman that you're actually attracted to? Like, do you catch yourself sometimes, like when no, you? No, I'm a verse talk actually. Well, <laughs> 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 verse talk crazy. Oh, huh? No. Yeah. <laughs> That's crazy. I'm a ladder. I go oh, up and down. <laughs> um, yeah. The big example is um me making paper hearts. <laughs> so right, answer the question. Answer. I do see myself um if it's a woman that I'm attracted to or above average, doing things. Oh, that was the question. To like, oh, <laughs> I, I do see myself doing more things in general for a woman I'm attracted to or a woman I'm interested in. General more than a woman I'm not interested in. But if it was just like helping a person out, it wouldn't matter to me if they're attractive or not. Mm -hmm. Just being a good person. I ain't helping out See, nobody. Like I get, I get that, like doing like acts of kindness for like anyone and everything, you know? But like whenever I'm really attracted to a girl or like let's say even a girl that I'm dating, like sometimes I'll get like severe tunnel vision to help that person. Like, like anyone else, it's like a casual, just like, oh, I'll help them out whenever I can. But if I like someone, severe tunnel vision, and I'll do like whatever it takes to help that person. I mean, I feel like it also depends on the task or what you're asked to do. Yeah. Like, <laughs> no cost, no cost too great. Like anything for my queen. Like if it's just some random person I'm helping, no matter the attractiveness, and I just know <laughs> that like we're just strangers, like I'll help them the same way I'll help anyone, no matter how attractive they are. But if it's someone I like. Maybe I'll put a little more effort into it and actually like take the time to like do it right and make sure like whatever they ask me to do is like thoroughly done and like completed. We share with the balls. Yeah, what Zach said. It just if it's someone I'm interested in or someone I find attractive, I will be doing more than the bare minimum at points. But it also depends on what we're talking about, like homework, socialization, or socialization, or just like talking to them yeah. or small things. Um, okay, yeah, so, I mean, I feel like that wraps it up pretty well.
Um, so now kind of like vice versa for the girls. Girls get kind of like a mix of it. Okay. <laughs> so my question for the girls <laughs> is, do you find guys who act like that more attractive when they help? Um. Hmm, I'm saying be a girl. So like, nah, fuck that bitch. <laughs> <laughs> No, I should. I wish I say that, but no. Like being a girl, you know, like you definitely do wish that, like you, you really do want somebody to like be there and help you for like every minute of your time, like whenever they can, and like especially when you really, really like someone, like you want that attention and you want them to like, like you kind of just like want to know that like okay, like I want him to like know that you know like I'm dedicated to him so that like he can give his time to me. And like I feel like that's like a really big thing, and then I feel like another thing is that like, yeah, it is nice if like a guy that we like or or we are dating, if they were to like help us, because like regardless, you know, like girls live by the mindset of like, like, yeah, we're like empathetic and whatnot, but then like we want you guys to give what we give to you, and then like like you guys said like, it's because like guys aren't vulnerable like that that you guys can't be vulnerable with girls. And like it, yeah, and like it gets like <laughs> not, nah. and it's like hard. It's like hard for guys yeah, to, to do that. <laughs> but yeah, so that's that's my opinion. So I do think that like everything that they do, guys, they need to like. Yeah, I don't know. It depends on what it is, really. Mm-hmm. But I think for, okay for me, I really like it when like I don't have to say. That like I don't have to say. You can just notice that like, like, like anticipating your needs, picking up yeah. those clues. Okay. Yeah, just like, just like stuff like that. Like oh, if God, you, that's how it's fuck, bro. Huh? It is how it's fuck. Whenever whenever someone anticipates your needs, like cut, 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 cut. That is so good. No, but yeah, I I like that. It's just like those little stuff, you know. Like if you clearly see that like I'm shaking my leg a lot, or like all of a sudden like I'm fiddling with my hands and shit. Like you start to do something. No, I I it's like, like that. <laughs> um, I also I also like helping too. I don't know if it's Loki from trauma from growing up, but I like feeling like my man needs me mine. as well. Like it feels nice. Amen. Yeah, it feels nice knowing your partner wants you there and your partner needs you there. So like, whenever like they're confused. <laughs> no, but I I like feeling that like my man needs me like there's something that he needs help with and he needs me specifically because then it's like like you could choose anybody to help you out but you chose me so it feels it feels nice i also really do like it when um when like i'm being helped out as well because there are moments i think you can relate to more of this than i can where you're so independent, like you've grown up being so independent that like when you are able to not have to be so independent, it feels nice that you can rely on someone. But I thought that was the opposite, because typically with like at least girls that I've talked to who've been like independent their whole lives, they're more reluctant to give that up than like even like it's like I've like talked to girls who are independent and they like yeah. refuse to let me help them with anything. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? Yeah, that's like basically like kind of what I'm going through because like. Me and my boyfriend, like, if I get stuck with, like, homework stuff, like, I don't really ask him to help me. Like, I'd rather, I'm, and, like, this happens a lot because, like, I'm also, like, the only daughter within my mom's side of the family. So then, like, it's, like, really hard. And, like, it's kind of hard opening up in general, too. But then, like, um, you know, like, yeah, I don't know. Like, when you're just kind of independent growing up, like, you don't really, you feel like you don't need to rely on anybody. And, like, that's, like, a Mm -hmm. really big like I don't know like it's a big slap on the face whenever like you're struggling like by yourself and then like you don't know how to ask for help or something like that yeah. and like that's why like I feel like in life like it's all about asking people and it's all about like asking for help in life but then like if you don't learn how to do that because you're so independent like you're gonna have a hard time I think it's like me personally I feel like an independent woman needs a time where or needs a time or person that she can go to where she doesn't have to have her guard up so much because to me i view it as independent women are always having their guard up 
That's why they're never asking for help. That's why they're never like showing their emotions and stuff like that. So I feel like someone coming into your life and like allowing you to put that guard down whenever you want to and still being there. I think every woman deserves that. I think like through having a partner, you can gain that. Like my sister is extremely independent. She makes it clear that she doesn't want a man and she I'm pretty sure she doesn't need a man. But I think because she's been so independent and so like in control of everything in her life, like I genuinely want her to be with a guy who will let her be happy with being able to put her guard down. Yeah. Awesome real shit. Um, exactly what Paku was saying. But um in short terms, I think just in general, knowing when to self reflect, knowing when to advocate for yourself. Knowing how to how to find a way or knowing a way how to handle your problems or solutions and knowing your role depending on which side you're on. Like if you're on the side where you need to help someone or you want to help someone, or on the world where you're in trouble, just knowing how to handle it and knowing when to be vulnerable and knowing when to advocate it. Because you're not alone in anything you do. And there's always gonna be people people around you, people who care. Even if it's something that they can help you on, they can give you something, um, not maybe not physical, not physically help you, but can give you some like spiritual support. This is the most empathetic I've ever seen you. Yeah, I know, ever. right? Yeah. Where is this? No, this is this is a facade. The question is, why is it that we as humans will constantly give in order to get someone to like us? Give. Why do we feel like we have to do something to that person for that person in order? For them to like us i think it goes 50 50 because one part is just like instinct at least it is for me um i don't feel like because i like I don't, I don't do things with like the expectation of getting anything back like yeah it's a nice bonus you know and it's in the back of your head whenever you're doing something for someone you know it's like oh maybe it'll be nicer to me or maybe they'll like me you know but like in the end like i think it's just instinct like human nature to do things for other people whether it's like gifts uh, acts of service whatever whatever what are you wondering it's like it's like you know when you order a 10 piece at mcdonald's and chicken nuggets and they give you like 12 pieces yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. Like, that feels good, you know. Even for like not getting that ass. <laughs> just like, just like the That's idea. Like, yeah. you thought that. <laughs> that was the analogy. No, this is like, this oh, a good no, example. No, no, no. This is a damn good example. Because <laughs> you're going to the drive-through, you're ordering, you're trying to get something that you want, but you get more in return. But you're like, oh, they didn't ask for this, but I'm gonna take it. You know what I'm saying? That ass. It's like it's like me making people free drinks from the brew. Like, by the way, um, shout out. I don't actually do that. Okay, this is a <laughs> hypothetical. Um. Right. Like, I don't expect anything back. Like it's not good. like I just give them out. I don't fucking. Like, I'll need to, I'll need to no, I'm not gonna get anything back anyways. But like I Why still do it because like I know like it's gonna make someone smile, make their day a little bit better. W um, even if they're having like a fucking Low terrible days. day. Like I, I feel like it's just it's just good, and that's like the easiest way to put it. Oh wait, and I also feel like feel like the reason why you think that way is also because you actually grew up with like. I feel like two yeah, guys. No, no, no. it always goes back to no, two no, 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 no. Like, like I'm dead. So you actually grew up. You, I feel like you grew up having that, like, that having what like a daughter in law can have growing up. And it, cause like, I think about it, and I'm like, dang, you, you're you're a very empathetic person. You go, do you have siblings? I do. I have two siblings, one older, one younger. Oh, boy or girl? Both boys. Oh. Oh. But yeah, no, you like no sisters. Oh, dang. He has a personality of a sister. Yeah. Oh, She's dead. Yeah, but oh, damn. She's not born yet. Awkward. Um, I'll finish there. Anyways, um, I forgot what the other fifty percent was gonna be, honestly. <laughs> but yeah, I mean, like at the same time, if we're like going back to like, just like the idea of like oh, like if like somebody doesn't get you something. Exactly. Like, Have there's you? always the worry that like people are gonna take advantage of you. At least it is for me. Adrian will always like tell me to be careful with like people taking advantage of me because he knows how like oh, yeah. fruitful I can be with like giving shit out. Yeah. You know, whatever no. it be. He's like, I careful, use... people will like use you. But at the same time, he's like, yes, like okay, shut up. Um, here's, here's like the one thing like someone else can view it as like using me, but I can always view that at, like in the end we're both getting the same thing. Like, okay, let's say that you you're using me. Okay, you got what you wanted and. I guess you got the satisfaction of using me. What did I get? I gave you something for free and you're happy. In both solutions, you're both happy, so why should I care? You know, so like, let's say someone is using me and I'm fully aware, I don't I don't care. Like, you see it as you, use, or, uh, you using me and I see it as like me just helping you. So like, in the end, I think it just all comes down to just like the human nature and, nature and just like the, the desire to just do things for others without expecting anything in return.
Yeah, I can definitely relate to that because I used to work at the boba shop, so like a lot of people would use me. Um, but like, kind of question to that, like, have you ever felt like you needed to do something for someone in order for them to like you? Um, a hundred percent. I think whenever it comes to like impressing maybe like superiors or like people that like you're told you're supposed to impress, maybe like, I guess. I mean, even if like we're gonna go back to like a a little bit of a controversial case but like a, a pretty girl you know like sometimes people around you will tell you oh my gosh she's so bad you have to go after her and sometimes like because of that you'll feel the extra need sure. and it, all it takes is one comment from your friend to go like yo she's bad and all of a sudden you're like hey if i'm nice to this girl and maybe she starts liking me then my friends will think i'm cool you know maybe like a little bit something like that but at the same time in the end like regardless of the motives or, or whatever um you're still doing something kind for another person, and I think that's enough. Um, and yeah, you know, that's, that's really all that. It's really not that deep. I feel like it's just like our common nature to do nice things for people that we want to like us, because we do that because we think of what are some things like I would want these people to do to me, like do for me, like, and like we all we always want people to do nice things for us and treat us nicely. So it's probably like this instinct to treat. The people that we want to like us nicely and just like with respect and just do nice things for us so again like just i forgot where i was going this but... <laughs> no me too bro's nervous i'm a little nervous if you want something really bad chase it and take the opportunity to say you tried you know what i'm saying even if it didn't work out i agree but sometimes people aren't worth chasing some people aren't worth like the trouble and the chase that you give them because it also depends on the people because some people again like you said will take advantage of you and take advantage of that niceness so like it honestly it depends on the person most people won't take advantage of you because they understand like that hey like he is being vulnerable for me and like he's doing this nice things for me so like i should like make my intentions known but other people, they won't. They'll keep hiding those intentions and they will hide them well enough to where you can't tell if they are being real or fake. And like, I, I sort of get that, but like going back to sort of like what Adrian was saying, like if you want something, go get it at like any cost. You know, like who the fuck cares? But at the same time, I actually think that's kind of selfish, no offense, you know? Because I feel like, like you were saying, you know, there are some cases where that's just genuinely not the right option, you know, whether doing like getting what you want is at the cost of someone else or someone else's feelings or just like being in the way of other people's lives I don't think that's I, I don't think that's that's okay for you to do um, but no like 100% because then you have people who will use you people who just won't treat you right um, and like who knows like a lot of times we get tunnel vision whenever we like something or someone and we don't really pay attention to how we're affecting the things around us whenever we don't get them and like we end up hurting other friendships, hurting relationships, breaking trusts, and like, you don't really realize everything you've hurt until maybe after you've gotten what you wanted and you kind of look back and go, damn, I really lost a lot, or damn, I really ruined a lot for other people, and I just don't think that's good for you to do. Depending on my part, um, my part is like, if you want something, chase it, and say at least you tried, but then going along with Amigo saying, you don't have to step on others to get what you want. Sometimes you do. Sometimes you do, and it's an evil and world. that's when it's not worth it. That's what I'm saying. Whenever you have to step on someone else's shit, then it's not worth it. Then you don't do it. Try any circumstance. True, true. And I believe that. But sometimes, <laughs> things are fair game, and you don't, you shouldn't have to wait. I'm here, you're I'm kidding. <laughs> you shouldn't have to wait, and just because someone else wants an opportunity, there's gonna be winners and losers. And it's okay to be self selfish sometimes, because at the end of the day, you're only worried about yourself. Not true because there's more than one person on this planet and having the mentality to only fend for yourself is really selfish. I agree. But sometimes you should do what makes you happy. Fuck that. I'll give up everything that makes me happy. If That's it a makes yes man right there. That's a yes man right there. Y'all see it here. Okay, can I jump in? Um, I think, okay. I kind of took this question very... We really went on a tangent there. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I took this question... Like personal. A little, a little, yeah, a little more personal it's because, in the stew. like, growing up, I've always <laughs> done things for people, and I didn't realize that I did it so much because I wanted them to like me, and, like, given, like, my recent situation, like, I gave so much to this one person who I genuinely valued as a friend, 
genuinely valued as a friend. Like I saw her as a, I saw her as a sister. <laughs> so when all of a sudden, like, like she just kind of decided to leave me, it hurt a lot. And I realized that like I kind of regret what I had done for her because the way she treated me is exactly like not. It's ex ex just not kind of the reaction I was expecting for what I had done because I like I I am a person who loves hard so when I love hard and I not not me expecting anything in return but when I just get mistreated and it when it gets to a point where it's like I would have never done the same to you it just kind of gets sad at one point like was there any other reason that had gone wrong because I thought I did everything right but then that's when it gets to a point like it could be suffocating as well for that kind of point I feel like we just need to like realize the self-worth in ourselves and that's these people don't deserve us these people deserve who they treat they deserve the, they deserve the people they treat like you know like they treat people like shit so they deserve shit okay. so that, that was a that was a bad way of putting it, but like, you you should you should get what you. Hey, no, 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 do you need to go to the bench? Do you need to go to the bench? Sub them out, sub them out, sub them out. Sub them out. Time out, time out, time out, time out break. Big, big break. Okay, we're gonna take a little break. We're gonna take a TV break. We're gonna take a little break. God damn. Let's well, save right. the cut. Hey y'all, we're back from our break. Um, and we're gonna move on to the next, the next article. So, this article is called, He Looks Easy and She's Not Into It. So basically, they brought in women, and these women rated photographs of men displaying various levels of exploratory cues, and they completed the components of mate value survey and socio-sexual orientation inventory. So they had discovered that women have, um, they use similar cues of intent. I can't say that word, it's too big of a word. What's the word? So That's crazy. In anticipation, yeah, and <laughs> and manipu manipulation, yeah, to I infer. Just found, no wonder she's in fucking <laughs> English one on one. Yo, <laughs> I had I, I had kidding. two years of ESL. Okay, leave me alone. Wonder what you're She could have looked up these words for the two. <laughs> this girl. Just for Anyways, synonyms. to in to infer sexual exploitation in men. So they had to discover. They have found that both men and women will use forms of manipulation in order to kind of like what they want. Like yeah, flirt with the guys. But then for more of the women it was like mainly focused on genetic cues that was associated with um short term attractiveness. And then for like the guys they used a lot of like um just manipulation in general. So like my question is like do you think this is true? Like, do you think men often use manipulation or like girls who look easier? And why is that? Like, they go for girls that are easier? Or yeah. Like, um, I can say that, like, guys do use manipulation tactics because girls, like guys, they like to chase. They like to work for the guy. They like to, like, and again, like, sometimes the chase is too much. So, like, guys do, like, the push pull method where they like give in they give in and like they like give some like emotion they give but like, they give in and they like, show that they're interested and they pull back and like show the less interest just to like, keep the girls on their toes just to, like show like hey like i'm not easy like you gotta uh, you gotta also try like to dominance i no not like dominance just like self-respect just self-respect i guess no. just like to show like like, if, I, if I'm going to put all my energy into this, you better as well. So if I pull back, you better pull forward. Does that not sound like dominance? No, just knowing your words. It's just like, oh, it's like true. power. It's like a power dynamic. Like, like people can control the power dynamic. And like, depending on the people and the couple, like, 
like if one person has the power they control like how the relationship is flowing they control the dynamic and if the other person doesn't they have to respond and respond in a way that like is like adequate Wow. Y'all want to add anything? Ellie, it's your time, right? What's that? Power dynamics. I don't know. Okay, what was your question? Do you Damn. think it's true that a lot of men will go for easier women, but women don't like easy men? Do I think that men will go for easier women? Yes, because it's easier to get pussy from. <laughs> Do I think that Real. girls go to easier men? No, because girls have expectations from guys in either area like they want a guy who like who like knows themselves and like isn't confusing but then girls don't know that like girls can't really keep their words on that that's why they end up in like toxic shit by easy men are we talking about or sorry yeah easy men are we talking about men who just like it doesn't take long to get into their pants or easy men as in like simple men without ambitions or like like good standards because i feel like that's a really good like yeah like what we yeah. were about. really good point okay so like i say that it works both ways because like one is one is and i've been like i was told this too but i've been told that like pussy is pussy you know if you can get it you can get it okay and then so then it doesn't really matter there's no variety you know like like it doesn't matter if you like fugly or something you know like like if she's down, then you're gonna be down because it's a body count for you or some shit. So yeah. I feel like that also depends. Like if it's just like a if the person's just into like they just want sex, mm -hmm. that's where it's pussy's pussy. If they want a girlfriend, most guys would tend to go for a girl that's a little e harder to get, a little like who like you gotta put like some effort. You gotta like they have some self respect. They won't just like throw themselves at you because like if they throw themselves at you, it's kind of like it's not like a not like a turn off but like it's like i already have you like why should i try like and then like i guess like while we're speaking about that like a follow-up question that i have is like um what do you guys think about being loyal during the talking stage you want to go first because i have two cents um i i think that's a personal preference um i think for me if I see someone I know I like for sure I'm gonna stay loyal to them because if I really like you I don't see options not really like not like that if I really like you I don't want to waste my time on other people I don't want to give other people the same energy that I'm giving you because then it just doesn't feel special anymore yeah yeah, I really like that. I think it also depends on how long the talking stage has been going. Like, if we're saying that, like, you went on, like, one or two dates over the course of, like, two weeks, then, like, eh, you know, I think you're still, like, free to explore your options. But at the same time, if you've been talking to a girl for months and months and months, and, like, you're pretty convinced that this is the girl that you want to date, um, and you're, like, not even, like, regardless of whether you're sure if that girl wants you back, you have to have some sort of loyalty because, one, um, it, it's, it's, a, it's a progression thing. Like, loyalty shouldn't just start whenever you commit to someone like you have to be i feel like you should be able to demonstrate it since before because if you're like um if like the day before you start dating that for one of those people like hooked up with someone then i see that you can't jump from zero loyalty to like a hundred percent loyalty in like one night like I, I just don't think that's possible because commitment does take time it does take time to like be able to like let go from like other desires that you might have and that's okay that's why I think it's okay in the beginning to like waver in loyalty as long as you build up towards that. But that's mainly why the talking stage is there, you know? Because yeah. um, then it just creates a strong relationship almost done. But um, also because, uh, I mean like what, what you were saying a little bit about stuff, what you were saying, it's just sort of, um, 100%, I just think of like it just fosters a stronger relationship whenever you're loyal to someone beforehand. And um, yeah, I mean that's, I mean, that's pretty much it. Going along with that, I feel like there are only two types of people in this world. People who date to marry, people who date to have fun, and have sex. He means, yeah. Um, along with that, it's just try to be family friendly. <laughs> <laughs> people just need to communicate um, the things that they want and the things that they value. One hundred percent. Like no matter what, even if it's like the first thing you're meeting, set the boundaries and let them know your intentions. Because some people will think other things, right? Yeah. People so just communicate. Communicate, <laughs> and then. Going along. Is key. 
Communication is key. Write that down like a hundred times. <laughs> Any communication is better than no communication. I don't struggle with communication. False. Quote me. False. You can have communication but comprehension. If you understand, if you understand your significant other, then like that equalizes everything. Because if you can literally tell, talk to anybody, I can literally talk to like you two about something, and like if you guys are disagree about me, or, like disagree on like a topic with me, then we can't comprehend anything, and then it's just gonna become an argument instead. Mm -hmm. So comprehend. I concur. Period. Well, <laughs> I want to add to that because what, what Kelly says is very true. Like you. Like, you can communicate, but I think it's also important for the person you're communicating to, whether this be a partner, friend, or whatever, just in general, I think it's important for them to actually take in what you're saying. Because you can do a lot of communications on your part, but if the person isn't listening, then there's no point in communicating. Period. Right. Going back to the main point where... Um, <laughs> right. Way to, way to wrap it up. Way to wrap it up. Wrap it up. should say loyal during the talking stage. I feel like the talking stage to every single person differentiates. Because some people think like, oh, it should be like the first three months. Oh, it should be like the first couple of days. It depends on the person and the two people who are going to be incorporating with each other. And um, I just feel like just you gotta communicate no matter what. And for an example I have is that um, if you're going into the talking stage or getting prepped to go to the talking, talking stage, just letting them know what that means from your perspective. Like, are you still gonna be fucking around? Are you still gonna having, are you still gonna look for options? Or are you willing to try and keep this just you two? Cause I feel like, um, an example I have is that I have like a deck of cards, like Nico says. He does have a deck of cards, at least 10. A deck of cards of people I'm looking at are options. Women. Women, men, <laughs> they, them, whatever. But um, I don't think about anything. <laughs> um, I respect every single person. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't think of them anything like that as um, besides just potential people. But there's only one person I think of that I do actually like and that I can't get over. She don't want you. She don't want me. She don't want me. She don't want me. She don't want me. That's when you know you gotta let go. Let's pull up the text. Let's pull out the text. Damn. I hear it one more time. Damn. <laughs> so what are we? Just friends, right? Yeah, and that confused me really much because <laughs> one. Nico. Damn. Going back to a topic we talked about before, I went out my way to do small this things for her. You right. did, and she didn't care. She gave you nada. But she communicated. Nada. But she communicated with me and told me she wanted me to respect her boundaries. She did, and that um, she only sees us as friends currently, and she's healing, and she needs time to herself. Amen. And I get that. Amen. Yeah, and I and I told her I respect that, and I'm gonna um, respect her wishes. Boundaries. Exactly. Yeah. On God. On God. That doesn't mean I'm gonna. That doesn't mean I'm gonna cut her off. But I gotta know that I gotta chill out, and then one, she's a person too, and every person is entitled to their own feelings. But should people stay loyal to the talking stage in their talking stage, you just gotta communicate. Right. I don't think technically you have no obligation to if no communication was said. Right. Um, if you wanna talk to other people, you have every right to. And they do have every right to be upset because if they were loyal to you and they found out you weren't loyal to them, they have every right to be upset. But I think because y'all didn't communicate about it, that's where shit just kind of goes. That just means that's where shit falls apart. You guys didn't communicate. Yeah. Things fall apart. It depends on who you guys are, but you guys need to communicate no matter what. Yeah. The, um, the length of how long you guys are in the talking stage, that's a different topic. I think yeah, that's what matters. It's like what I was saying, because like at the very beginning, if you guys went on like a couple of dates, there's there's no there's no like real commitment because that's still like the fuck around and find out if you like each other kind of thing you know like you're still like uh you're testing the waters you know but like if you guys have been on six seven dates um it's been going over the span of even more than like a month and a half then yeah like if you have any urge to like branch out and maybe like start afresh you need to like tell them either by saying hey, i'm gonna be honest I, I really don't feel feel you anymore or just yeah, really yeah, that's literally what you have to do like, like there's no other option really or just don't really talk to anyone else. You thought like, I was feeling you? But, dude, you just muted it. Okay, so, <laughs> I, okay, so I have an even better follow-up question. Muted. So like, uh, like what do you guys think? What do you guys think when like, when, let's say like a guy is like really committed to you, right? And then like, he goes and he fucks around with like other females, and then 
after he's like fucking around with this other female and she comes back to you? How do you like like what do you think about that? Well, why why do you think why what would you do if you're in that situation? personally I would be kind of I'd be fifty fifty because if they fucked around and found out like like there's nothing better than me, I'd be a little like ego oh. booster. It would be a little bit of an ego booster, but at the same time, no, like, <laughs> we could, but on the other hand, it's like, they had the chance to be with you, but they chose to go with other people, and in the end, they came back, which is like, you didn't want me then, why would, you, why would I want you now? So like, why, what is the point, like, if you come back to me, like, you better be on your knees, because I'm not, I'm, I, like, you better be sorry, because like, because like, why, why would you leave me in the first place? No, like 100%, I 100% agree with what Zach says. Um, because like on paper, on paper, you could say, oh no, but like, there's nothing bad that happened because you guys were not together, so it wasn't like cheating, but at the same time, like what's real on paper isn't always like what's true, you know? Like you take it, take it like emotionally, but like, what you're saying, you know, just because it isn't like legitimately on paper cheating or like morally wrong, someone could argue, doesn't mean that it's actually not wrong. Yeah, so as I was about Actually. to as I was about to say, um, as long as you guys communicated and if you guys weren't serious, it's not a big deal. But if you guys did tell each you other that he... you guys are committed to each other or planning to be committed to each other, and he or she decides to go fuck around and comes back to you, you should have the self respect knowing you don't actually like them, you like the idea of them, and you deserve better. And um fuck 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 fuck. Uh, I need to think real quick. All right, so while he thinks, I guess I could just sort of just like tell you guys about my day today. All right, how can we talk? Okay. All right, just given like if I was in that situation, me personally, and I don't know, I don't know if other people can also speak like the same, but I get really attached to a person when I like really like that person. They can literally do anything they want to me, and unfortunately, I would still stay because I'm just that attached so if my boyfriend were to ever cheat on me i think i would break up with him but if he's countlessly shown me that he really wanted me back and he really does feel sorry i honestly do think i'd give him another chance and if once i give him that other chance you if should. he does fuck me up again or if i'm just not feeling it again like i can't have that sexual attraction to him anymore due to knowing that fact or that it just becomes automatically toxic because now knowing that he's cheated on me, then like I'm constantly like monitoring him, hoping that he doesn't do it again to the point where I just start to lose myself. I think at that point, once I give him that second chance and it just becomes like that, then I think it's just kind of, you should just call it quits. I agree to that to some extent. Second chances are always necessary and I don't think it's a bad thing, but if someone did you dirty the first time they go do it again. They'll do it again for sure. And you they could do it again. No they guarantee could. that they will do yeah. it again. But if they found it in their heart once, um, they chances are that it's still in their heart, even if they don't do it. And I, the, you know, trust comes into the picture and everything. But like, not my, not my, not my thing. If, if, if they hula, they're gonna hula again. Right. And if they oh, did you wrong, if they shenan, they're going shenan again. <laughs> if they did you wrong. Imagine how they felt when they were doing you wrong. Do they feel bad putting that shit in? I guess to like kind of wrap up all of this. Right. Not really wrap up, yeah. but to like... Make sure you always wrap it up. I got one more question. Stay protected. Okay. Well, <laughs> okay. Because I think... Uh, I, yeah, you asked your question. I think we hit... Yeah, I think yeah. we hit every question that I had asked for this specific okay. article. Okay, well then I asked this and then you can ask yours and I'll just wrap it up. Okay. Okay, but... Okay, so before we get to the end of this, Basically, what I want to know is, do you guys have any questions that you guys wonder about females that you guys want to ask us? Mm, I guess because, like, I always thought, like, one thing that girls really liked in guys, especially as, like, we went through college and got older, you know, uh, it didn't really matter too much about, like, the looks anymore because, like, high school's over, but, like, emotional competency instead. Like, being having, having the ability to understand just like emotions, not just being empathetic, but just like understanding, you know, the cascades of emotions of the people around you and how other people's emotions affect the people around them, you know, like how much do you guys actually value that in a guy? So let me get this straight. You're kind of asking why do women value or want emotions? No, do you guys value that? 
Oh, oh yeah. Oh, as like as like time goes on, because like over high school, like people didn't really care about that. It was more about like yeah, no. like oh shit, you cute. Yeah, yeah no, exactly. It didn't matter. Yeah, yeah. I mean, and like, if it is it emotional uh, competency, like, what is it? That, I think like, becomes like the main like oh wow factor. I'm not gonna okay. Moolah, so, moolah, moolah is a valid answer. <laughs> be harsh. Be harsh. So no, like I I value like a guy who knows what he wants and will communicate it because just like men have a complication with women. They're always like, why can't the woman say what she wants? Why can't she just make up her mind? She, like, why does she always expect me to read her mind? It's like the same thing with women. Like, women don't understand you guys. Something Sometimes you do things that we don't understand. And what we do is we overthink about it. And when we overthink about it, that's not really safe for us. And it's all of that could have been resolved if you just let us know. Kind of like just what the men want with the women. <clears throat> we just want to know what's on your mind. Okay, and like, I got that. That's a good answer. By the way, but one more thing, you know, because everyone will always talk about the differences between the men and the women when it comes to dating, but like, are there really that many differences? Like, when you actually think about it, like, are we all really that different when it comes to like, how we view one another, like, in terms of like, starting a relationship? Mm -hmm. Um, in general, I feel like, no, I mean, we're not that different, but then like, it's, it also depends on like experiences that we had with like like people in the past that create us to be the type of people that we are when we're looking for significant like when we're looking for a significant other because like the, like let's say like okay like I like you had a toxic girlfriend in the past right or like mm -hmm. or like your ex didn't communicate with you okay she so then me. yeah and so, <laughs> and so like now like what you're trying to look for like basically you built a new standard okay. you know and so like. That's basically somebody that you should look for in a girl. Somebody who can communicate with you and like just talk to you and be mature with you, you know? Okay. And like I feel like as you slowly get to like talk to people, like that standard kinda builds up. So I would say like yeah, everybody begins at the same level, but because of experiences that we go through, we all end up different at like different levels. Okay. Um, my point of view on it is I do also think that men and women are not different, but I think the reason why we have so many situations of misunderstanding is due to the fact that we're always setting expectations for our partners. Mm -hmm. We always expect them to do this and to do that without this whole like with this whole concept of without having to tell them straight up. It's kind of like people already put a standard with what love is and how people should act upon love. And what that standard is, basically like what women are saying now, if he wanted to, he would. Like if you love someone this much, you will notice those little things, you will remember these little things. And I think because both genders, are, or both part, like sides of the story, are setting this expectation on each other, they're often clashing heads. All genders actually, all genders. Yes, yes, all, yeah, all genders, just, 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 just humans in general. We just kind of set an expectation on other people um, without actually thinking to communicate it first because like you can't like, always expect for your partner to know how to love you when you're not telling them that's when you're not letting them know how you want to be loved okay. um, like Zach wanted to add something okay. Okay. Oh, I, have a, I have a question if you have something to add okay. continue no, we're good. We're good. You can go mm -hmm. question. all right so everyone's saying like they value communication but like Sometimes communication is a little too much for people and like they won't be truthful. So like how much communication or how much effort is too much and how much is too little? Wait, you look like you want to say something. Well, okay. Throw in your two, <laughs> Throw in your two pennies. Okay, I think people who often complain about co like communication need to grow the fuck up. Yeah. They need to grow up because if you're gonna constantly create scenarios in your own head without even communicating with the person first Then that's on you and you need to grow up Because if someone's coming to you straight up and letting you know what you did to them was not okay What you said hurt their feelings and you can't handle that shit You can't even respect this other person who probably holds a higher title than just a random stranger If you can't handle that you need to work on yourself because it just comes at the end of the day of having respect for the other person. And like, I think this is a big issue because me personally, like with my relationship, I have communicated with him multiple times. 
I have communicated with him multiple times and there's a certain degree that I have hit that it's like I can only communicate to you so much before I realize you're not even listening. So it's just that type of shit. Like I sorry. Is no, it a compatibility issue at that point? Because like that's why I broke up my ex too. It's just that like yeah, I thought that like she didn't communicate, but like deep down we just communicated from different ways. Yeah. So well, like oh, yeah, at that point, true. would you think it's more of a uh, compatibility compatibility issue or more just like the lack of being able to communicate? Well, the real question is, is that like did she put in her effort? How long? How she long did, but too she did, for, but for too late. Long? Oh no, she didn't start until maybe nine, ten, eleven months after. Okay. She didn't. Yeah. She, she communicated, but to the extent where it just helped like benefiting her. So blessing, blessing. Good. What? what? Come say hi. Say hi. Oh, uh, hi. Oh, wait. Yeah, yeah, get a yeah. 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 Barisha, yeah. you too. Get in, get in, get in, get in here. Get, get in the clip. Get in the clip. Come and say hi. Speak into that mic. Oh, I don't know. Just say hi. Podcast. Say hi to the podcast. Time up. This is Kimberly. Oh, okay. that's crazy. <laughs> um, hi, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. You want to say hi? Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, Rita. Okay, so <laughs> we we yo. Yo. Okay, yo, my time are <laughs> Love you guys. I'll come say hi in a bit. <laughs> nah, for real. Nah, for real. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Um, but anyway, yeah, like, I guess it's, I guess it does kind of depend, like, um, like, when they started to communicate with you and when they put in their effort into you. But honestly, overall, can you, like, what was your question again? Like, if you were to be easy with me? Uh, like, how much if, of it, oh, sorry, yeah, how much of it is actually compatible? Like, if, commu- if the problems with communication come up more and more often, mm-hmm. like, at what point do you start questioning whether it's, like, a, an issue of more compatibility? Oh, than, okay, uh, okay. Well, I mean, like, if it keeps coming up, like, honestly, mm-hmm. if it's hard for you guys to talk, like, I personally don't think that it should be hard to talk about your feelings, but, like, if you have a negative thought about your significant other, if you can't, if you just, if you're a stubborn person, if you can't, like, like put down your pride to understand your significant other, then that's where your communication means nothing. Okay. Because like, right now we're all pretty understanding, we're all pretty empathetic about each other. But then like, let's say like, let's give you guys this friend, beat this out. Up. But yeah, like, let's give her for like an example, right? Like, yeah, you guys talk to her, yeah, you guys are like empathetic and whatnot, and like, but then like at the end of the day, like, you guys have bits and pieces of shit that you guys want to say about her, you know, and like that's like your guys' problem and whatnot. Yeah. So. All right, so um, possible hot take, um, communication can never be enough. That is a cold ass take. We we just said communication was key for like the past twenty minutes though. No, but, so, but sometimes it isn't like, enough. Sometimes it's not okay, enough. Okay, that's right. I'm, I'm saying like mm-hmm. sometimes it's not enough, but you can never get like it can never be too much. If, if it, when it comes right. to when it comes to communication being too much or just the the idea of communication being too much, that's not communication isn't the issue. Mm-hmm. The issue is other examples like does that person actually care about you, mm-hmm. and are you respecting yourself enough? to not leave the relationship, but stay? And what are you saying for if clearly whatever you're doing is not working? See, think about it like this. Think about if you have a key that can unlock 99 locks. It's a really good key. It's a really good communicator, but there's just one lock. No matter how good of a communicator this key is, it just doesn't work on. That's not the fault of the key. It's just a compatibility issue. And there's nothing wrong with that. Because that's what happened with my ex. She could communicate, but it was in a way that just frustrated me and the way that I communicated or frustrate her. I was very much a down-to-earth guy, the kind of guy where if we had an issue, I wanted to deal with it right away, you know? Like, I didn't really want to wait. She was the opposite. She needed sometimes days, months, not months, sorry, days or weeks to, like, process it before it really got to, like, the point where she could talk about it without, like, things getting really emotional. And being long distance, because we were long distance, it just didn't work out, you know, that alongside the fact that we both had completely different ideas of what love was and like the direction of our relationship. Communication was not the issue. We talked all the time, but it's after you talk 50, 60 times and you realize that it's the same issues are still there. It just, it's a compatibility issue. And there's, there's nothing tough about that. And then, okay, there's, it's tough, but there's nothing bad about it. Like it's nobody's fault. It happens as harsh it is, as it is, um, <laughs> but yeah, that's it. Yeah, so, um, sometimes you just have to accept the truth that not everyone in your life is supposed to stay, and 
the truth is, sometimes people are just there to meet you in that chapter and give you a lesson to learn. And you shouldn't regret or hate the person or hate our and just accept and move on and relive and cherish the memories, but just know that it's you gotta let go and move on. Mm -hmm. Did you want? Did you, you look like you some you got something to add? What was the next question? My question, unless you had you guys have more, no. is is it true that is it true that when a guy sees a girl? He instantly knows that he wants her. If he doesn't, then it's like okay. Cause okay, let me explain my situation, right? Cause when my when my boyfriend, when I had asked him out, he rejected me. I was rejected when I had Loser. confessed to him. You re he rejected you? Yes. He rejected, yeah. He re that's that's he re actually kind of funny. Stop. <laughs> how old were you? Wait, how old were you in this case? What were you like? Uh, I was 17? A, I was a freshman. In high school. And he was a sophomore. How long were you guys dating? We we've been dating for three years. Oh shit, okay. In my head I had like a year and a half. No, we've been we've been, been dating started. for three years. That's your husband. So go get your husband. Go get your husband. So I like when I first confessed to him that I liked him, he did not like me. And it wasn't until after some time, like a year, maybe, that he actually started to develop feelings for me. Yeah. So is it true that when a guy sees a girl he instantly knows that he wants her? If not, then it's like Long term, honestly, like we have no idea unless we actually start talking to you personally. But like, I will say, hundred percent, like even like coming from a guy like me, like whenever I look at a girl, I can definitely tell, like, of course, whether she's my type or not, you know. Right. Um, but sometimes I will say, and it has happened to me before, where uh, you know I know a girl, and like in my head, she's not the best looking, maybe a little bit ugly, but like, I start talking to her a little bit, you know, and then I go, all of a sudden, you're like, hey, she's kind of cute, you know, like, but actually, after you get to know them, you know, but that, that like that's that has happened to me before, you know, where. Like you, there's like a first impression, and like that can stick. Like that will probably stick if you never ever end up talking to the person again. But once you start talking to them, that does that does very well change, and it can turn for the best or for the worst. Like for examples, bleep that out by the way. She was a baddie at first, but my goodness, bro. Right now, she's kind of ugly. She's kind of ugly. Oh, okay. Alright, I I still got it like that. I ain't gonna lie. Whoa, whoa, okay. She do. Whoa, <laughs> damn. I'm sorry. I, I also concur with Nico. I feel like most guys, they can no. come in. Attraction. <laughs> I didn't do that for him, mommy. <laughs> How can you just interrupted me? Sorry. But I'll continue. Yeah, fuck her. Sorry. Uh, attraction can come in two stages. First, like initial for guys. Most times, they can just look you up and down and know whether they want you or not. Be, but that's based off attraction and how you look. Uh, the second stage is off personality, which is like what Merck like most which should be like like the basis of like why you should want someone personality because like looks change over time they're not always going to look like that and like if you're with them when they change will you be there with them so like what i'm saying like attraction can come like based off attraction or like how you look that comes fast personality for most people it takes time because you got to learn about them you got to like see who they are see like who they truly are, what they want to do, what their intentions are, like, just like everything about them that isn't like just how they look. So what you're trying to say is my boyfriend wasn't physically attracted to me, but no, once, he, he, once he got to know me. Bro thought he was ugly as fuck! Yeah, okay, 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 right, great, 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 great. <laughs> great. Yeah, sorry. I can't speak for him, but maybe. Just for him. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think I gotta, one thing I gotta say is, um, if someone's hot, they can only I will yeah, stop. Uglier. Well, if someone's ugly, they can only improve from there. Yeah, they got the most personality. Exactly, honestly. exactly. She was okay. like. That's it. Actually, right. no, it's my Instagram. Adrian, get in. Wow, I like how you're already making the thumbnail when I didn't even finish it. Okay. We got it. We got it. Anyways. Okay, anyways. Yes. Alright, so this is Janet. Hi, guys. Oh, I hope you guys enjoyed this long ass podcast. I'm pretty sure. What? You don't have to do it, anything. This shit. Yeah. Honestly, just cut off the parts where we're just going on a tangent. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I want to say thank you all for listening and now watching. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this and for those who want to know who these guys are, um, these are. Literally Marquette students uh, stationed in Wisconsin, Milwaukee, 
And if you guys want to know what the results are, we'll link it down below. Or, yeah, we'll link it down below. We'll link it down below. Again, again, um, I'm Paku. I'm her, I'm her cousin. Oh, okay. Kelly, introduce me. Um, I'm Kelly. I'm the owner of this podcast, but barely got to talk. I'm Zach. I, I'm friends with Paku. <laughs> Marcus Sidon. I'm Adrian. I'm also friends with the person who didn't talk and owns this podcast, and Paku. Yeah, and then oh, Nico. I'm, I'm also friends with her, too. I guess. <laughs> and then Nico, Nico, but Nico, Nico is in the bathroom right now. But link God damn! Uh, it looks like Nico won't be able to Oh, Nico, you have... Okay, bye, too. Alright, love you guys. Um, Stay tuned for the next one. Oh. Oh my god. Yeah, alright. Hi, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. If you guys are still listening to this, I'll see you in the next episode. Episode. Take a bit off.